Folks, welcome to your Monday episode. It is a pop culture roundup. We are doing it all over again this week. Oh gosh, you guys, it has been a Taylor Swift heavy weekend. I am doing this live in Las Vegas, about to go see fish at the sphere tonight. I never thought I would say any of those words in any kind of combination, but here I am. So today, I needed heavy hitters to help me through uh, what potentially might be a traumatic event tonight. So today we have two of the best. We have people that have been doing this forever. Their 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 podcast literally has pop in the title. They are the pop apologists. We have Lauren and Chan, who really, I believe, are experts to walk us through not only Taylor Swift, but we'll be hitting a lot of other pop culture topics. Welcome to the show. It has been a long time coming. How are you today? Uh, right. Ryan, thank you so much for having us on. I just want to say I'm so impressed by your show. I mean, it is such a work. It, it, putting out a podcast <laughs> is so much work. And I, my sister and I have this great thing where we can rely on each other, but you are solo a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And that's well, so I just, want, I just am so uh, impressed. Well, first off, I want to just, Laura, that was just Lauren speaking. So you know your voices if you don't listen to their podcast, which I think you'll start listening to their podcast after today. That was Lauren. And then Chan, you say hello. Hello, everybody. Ryan, so happy <laughs> okay. to, to finally make this work. I feel like it's been a long time coming. Guys, mm -hmm. this this has been like four years coming. Like <laughs> I remember we almost podcasted to get like a long, long time ago. And what's so cool, and I hate to like kiss your ass right at the beginning, but I usually get so excited talking to new guests, but you guys especially, because when I was starting, you guys like were there. I remember, like I remember all of those things of you being there and what's so great like even recently, even before the Kate Middleton stuff, I was like so impressed just by watching your videos on your Instagram. And I was like, wow, you guys are really like honing in. And it was this really kind of awesome thing. And then just to explain to the audience, you know, why you never give up, why people can be like mm. extremely talented, but it's like hard for sometimes people don't know that you guys are out there. And then you had this series called you know, what was it? Who the, who the fuck knows where Keith Middleton is? Is that what it was? Middleton. Where the, who the, I'm sorry. Where, and by the way, we're, I want to be very positive because obviously we are very uh, pulling for Kate Middleton and heartbroken about the news, but you had this series. And I think this is what's so fascinating about pop culture, which you are a part of. You guys became a part of that pop culture talking about this Kate Middleton and where is she? And you all of a sudden out of, you had explosive growth. How insane was that for you guys on top of the topic being so really heavy to begin with? I'll, I can speak uh, to this. You know, we, we, I know we're like, who's, who's going to take this one? Cause it is really such a big <laughs> answer for us. Because, yeah. you know, you know what it's like to really work at something. We have been putting out two shows a week for four years, over four years. And so we were, you know, just kind of trudging along and we love doing it. And that's really why we mm -hmm. do it at the end of the day. Yeah. It's because we so love getting on to chat with each other. And we love this community that we have um, at Pop Apologist. But I will say that, you know, we really were kind of toiling away in, in obscurity relative to very successful podcast. <laughs> and yeah. that's just honest. And, you know, we, we kept going though, because we had this really, and we have this really core group of listeners. So we just have a, we had this really high percentage of people who were paying for our bonus episodes. And so we knew that when people found us, they genuinely tend to love us, tended to love us. And so we were like, we just have to figure out how to get to more people because we think this will work. And so anyway, we, kept believing in ourselves, um, despite, you know, <laughs> despite our mom telling us that the podcast was actually super embarrassing. <laughs> By the way, if you guys it. don't know, they're sisters. They are yeah, sisters. sisters. That's how, they, sisters. that's how they met each other is, yeah. is through the womb our, and things like that. But you know, that's wild. Honestly, our mom is our biggest naysayer. <laughs> she's gotten <laughs> better, but that's, that's, that's a story for another day. But, uh, but yeah, it was a lot of toiling. toiling yeah. And down. so, 
anyway, it was crazy though, because we just at some point or when the Kate Middleton series happened, I did these videos for fun. And you know what's funny about it is I actually thought like, bitch, if you don't get on a green screen right now about where <laughs> Kate Middleton is, you don't deserve a career doing this because this is a big pop culture moment. It's happening. Everyone's doing it. Like, and it's something you're fascinated with, and it's something that you're. Oh, actually I was fascinated so with. fascinated with, but I it would just been so much easier to scroll Twitter on the couch rather than like making videos. But it became so fun because anyway, the video spread like wildfire. We went from thirty three thousand to three hundred eleven thousand on Instagram. We're down to two sixty five. <laughs> but anyway, we had a drop off, of course. That's still that a happens. net positive. That's a net positive. Yeah, still. That yeah, is a we, big. We went up like 230,000 Instagram followers, which to us is like nothing short of miraculous. And our podcast had a similar growth. Crazily enough, we were able to convert Instagram people to the podcast. So it was truly, it felt like a miracle. And we're just so, so grateful. Well, but the great thing about it, one of my teachers always said, you know, it's like, listen, it, luck meets opportunity, sure. But you have to be like, once you once you get that piece of luck or that piece of opportunity, if you're prepared, if you're ready, like that's, those are the moments. That's what's so exciting. Like yeah. to me, you are just a, like a pop culture success on top of that, but you have to be, you know, that toiling around for four years of doing those things week after week, week after week, knowing that you are ready when the people actually come to actually like find out about you. That's what's so exciting and it's what's so exciting about like pop culture in general too if we pass around a tv show or pass around a song or something of you know like letting people know about what's out there you can actually build audiences for things that are worthwhile and you guys mm -hmm. have proven to be worthwhile so i just can't even imagine though you know just from that just from like celebrities actually that you know get that get fame in the beginning and how it's like really really crazy for them even in that sense for you guys blowing up that quickly even after like it's got to be mind blowing for you in so many ways yeah i mean i would say it's still kind of mind blowing and we're just like still shocked that some people are sticking around Mm -hmm. You know, uh, post Kate Middleton. Uh, yeah, I mean, there was a solid two weeks of us just kind of adjusting. Uh, and this is going to sound annoying, but like to the altitude or just like to just new people yeah. and, and trying to, you know, understand how to really like continue to do what we love, which is talking about pop culture and, you know, Taylor Swift now and all, all of the things. So, yeah, I mean, it, it was a wild week. I always I joked the entire week that or the entire two weeks of the, you know, entire scandal that Lauren had like meth vibes because she was just like extreme. We were just like on this train, like riding, you know, part 37 where the F is Kate Middleton. And we were just like, you know, having to be there on the front lines reporting on it. And yeah, anyway, we, we, Lauren has fewer meth vibes now, I would say. That's great. Cause it, wait, by the way, when you, when you get a lot of success, there's, there's uh there's drug problems. We know sometimes drug problems get introduced. So we're so excited. That that Lauren is actually okay. Lauren, would you agree yes. with all of your sisters uh, telling retelling? I mean, I would like a. I think a, <laughs> I would hope that my drug problem would not be with crystal meth if I became successful. <laughs> I just feel like that is just a really low brow drug to get into post, you know, things going well. No, it was honestly just funny because I think that when we started recording again, we would be chatting, and I'm just so used to talking with Chandler and having this core group of listeners listening, which is not wasn't a ton of people. It was a it was a nice chunk, yeah. but it wasn't a ton. And so mm -hmm. I remember, like, 20 minutes into recording for that first time, I was just like oh my god what the fuck i can't can i say that i'm so used yeah. to just saying whatever i want but now i'm like people are listening and i realized that it's actually really hard to fake it it's so much harder to like come up with things rather than just say what you think so we still continue to say things a lot of things that people don't like and it's i think the fun of the podcast is we're really not afraid to be ourselves and say you know it's and go there a lot of that's, ways. Well, that's so. what it is because your audience like knows that your audience wants to know the real you warts and all. Yeah. You know, yeah. like they really want to know. And, but I will say, isn't it interesting and almost gives you a little bit more perspective in celebrities lives or even Taylor Swift, who I've been fascinated with, with the new album is that when you are at a high altitude and I'm not, you know, saying you and Taylor Swift, you guys are exactly the same, but You're I will not? say- <laughs> sorry, sorry, huh? my bad. Okay, my bad. Ryan, I can, rude. I can edit. I can edit this out. I can. Edit, I, uh, I, I'm the Maddie Healy, you guys. Uh, no, I will say though, when you're at this, I just notice like people 
so much more negativity gets introduced because Mm -hmm. the pop culture is Mm -hmm. out to everyone. So, so many more negative voices can come out. And I think even with this podcast, what shocked me is that I always try to remain somewhat positive. Even if I'm talking like harsh truths about reality stars, I try to remain kind of positive. But then when you start reading negative things about yourself or hearing like what somebody like laser points about your personality that you're Mm -hmm. like, oh, I already hate that about myself and (laughs) they see it as well. It's really hard though, right? And I think you lady like realizing like kind of second guessing sometimes what you're saying. And then at the end of the day, realizing I got to throw that all the way. I got to just throw that out of the way and just do us. Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, I got... I caught fl- some flack for being a little too mean to Lauren. You know, I made a joke about how <laughs> we we Lauren, all notice it. We all notice it. That's what we're yeah, you're here I, today. You're too mean. It's you're true. Just too mean. I was. I, this is a you know. This is my trial. Um. No, but I made a joke about how. So I was actually on a bachelorette trip when the Kate Middleton stuff t- took off. And by the time I got back from my trip, we were on part nineteen. And then it was like, oh shit! Like this this train has left the station. Anyway, so I made a joke about how you know when you hire the right people, you know you, you good things happen. Like Lauren was my employee, and someone was like, I really don't like how Chandler you know acts like Lauren's her employee. <laughs> <laughs> And so anyway, I'm not going to fake it anymore. I'm going to continue being mean to Lauren because that's what I, you know, that's my duty as her sister. Thank God. Well, no, uh, it's, I, apologies though. Yeah. What's that? Oh, no, I was Lauren, just going to say, I also, I'm curious, Ryan, if you've had this, this experience, because I think that for me, it was a little bit jarring when I did read some of the stuff people were saying, because it was so like, yes, there were certain things people said that made sense to me, but other things they said were just like literally hate fiction. Like, just yeah. couldn't be further from the truth. And then I, what I, what I had the question about was like, how much of what we talk about when we're gossiping about mm-hmm. celebrities is literally just total BS in our minds that we believe yes. is true. And that was a little exactly. bit scary for me. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think that's the fascinating thing about, and in, in, in 2024, we have access to so many other things that we didn't have access to 20, 30, 40 years ago. So pop culture is such a fascinating topic because it's changed so much. It's like, you know, now we have the Reddit threads, the memes, everybody's right. making videos. I fell asleep watching TikTok last night about Taylor Swift. I fell asleep reading like theory after theory. And it's like, it's an interesting question that can almost drive you mad is is the information we get, like, it's like almost like half of it you could almost throw out as being completely Mm -hmm. ridiculous. But sometimes those little nuggets, and that's why we need people like you guys that can help us cut through the noise. Like I was talking to my friend Kiki, talk of shame. And I'm like, you need trusted voices. You need trusted Mm -hmm. voices where you're like, they bring something to it, but they also give information and then put a spin on it. Sure. But then sometimes it'll go completely off the rails. And I'm not mm-hmm. a huge conspiracy theorist. And I keep say- saying that even though then I'll throw out Bravo conspiracy theories, but <laughs> like it's hard not to. But like that's the interesting thing. And I'm I'm curious where we go from here. And like even you guys, if we hadn't uh, found out actually what Kate Middleton was up to or what was actually going on, where would it have ended for you guys? When would you guys have said, okay, like, was that Mm. what you were kind of waiting for with the series of like, let's find out exactly what was going on? Because listen, even besides you guys, I was getting explained this from so many different parties where I was like, oh my God, are, wait, aliens are involved? We got alien, like there's an alien abduction. Like it got, it started to go off the rails and I was having to learn about like the monarchy and I've never even been interested that, that much. In it. And then it got really fascinating to me, but I, oh, oh, we, sorry. You guys there? Okay. Anyways, yeah, uh, I'm here. Yeah. 13, 19, yeah. cut out. Okay. No, but anyways, you know what I'm saying? When like things go off the rails, where, where would it have ended for you guys? You mean in terms of where we were at when it, mentally with Kate Middleton, like where we're at head, headspace wise yeah. there? Well, when, when we, you would have dipped out of the series if we hadn't have gotten actual confirmation from Kate. Oh, I think we would. We kind of made a rule, so this is going to sound so ridiculous, but parts 24 through 27 contained what we thought had happened to Kate. Um, And then we really only did about one video per day if we had anything new to offer. Like not any new concrete, oh, this is what happened to her, but it was more like... This is something that's interesting to think about. This is something that someone said, but we weren't going to just do a thousand videos. We wanted to make sure that every video was super entertaining, but also sub- substantive. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know where it would have ended. We probably would have ended the series around like video 
37 because honestly there really hasn't been much happening after the after the video she put out right, right. there really haven't been developments so i think it probably would have ended pretty shortly thereafter anyway i, I will say yeah. though unless you know the the week kind of like kept on like it was where it was like we were getting new information or at least there were new things coming out it felt like every four to six hours it was like yeah. here's the photo of them at the farmer's market and that's why i think that's you know, it turned into this like really almost like laughable laughably long series was because it was it felt like there was new information like slowly trickling out of the palace or you know trusted sources from the palace like Constantly. all the time yeah well, That's it true. almost, it almost, it, you know, thinking just once again about Taylor Swift, it almost felt like an album release. We kept getting these little pieces of information and then mm -hmm. you would have to be like, well, even like, you know, any new Taylor Swift album or Beyonce album, people like, like go look for clues and people go like, oh my God, I saw this. I saw this QR code put up in a building in Chicago for Taylor's album. And we were seeing like things that then people were like, oh, that's AI, that's AI. And it's so weird. That's what I'm saying with pop culture can be scary because we have so many new tools to mm -hmm. like comment, to make things up completely. Like somebody sent mm -hmm. me a video of my voice uh, my voice AI of like me talking oh. about Chris, Chris Jenner. And I was like, I, I could have sworn to you that that was me. And I've done so many podcasts that I was like, I don't remember saying that, but it sounds like something I would say. And that was scary. And my buddy, Sean did this. And I, I was like, this is scary as hell. He's like, yeah, I just fed a bunch of your episodes into this AI machine. And it, I got to tell you, better than I am. Like the AI was better, like made better <laughs> points, like was funnier. And I was like, this is really scary information. Like this is scary what we can do now. And I just hope that there's rules put in place, especially for like art and artists and entertainment, because we could make anything and we can make anybody say anything at this mm -hmm. point. I, I kind of hope there aren't rules because that sounds like a great way for me to take a long vacation from the podcast <laughs> and, you know, well, just leave it to my AI twin to, you know, handle my side of the deal. Well, Chan, that's why you got to really get Lauren in shape. You got to crack exactly, that whip yeah. because yes, you got to yes. get your assist. Next um, time, I'm going to be gone. <laughs> yeah. Why do you call the podcast Pop Apologist? I think it's a great name. I've always thought it was a great name. Thank why you. Pop Apologist? Um, it's named Pop Apologist because we created it when Kanye was kind of more at the height of his musical powers. Um, and we just loved Kim Kardashian and Kanye Kanye West. We love talking about them. I think we, Chandler, when did the album come out or did the podcast come out when Yeezus was dropped? Or which uh, album was it? Pablo. I think Life of Pablo. Is there even an album called Yeezus? Yeah, there, there is. There, yeah. there is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 It's Life been a minute. I, it was like, it was, a, it was the era of like Bound 2 and, you know, Kim and Kanye at the height of Yeah, Kim their romance. And mm -hmm. anyway, we just, we loved the Kardashians. We loved Kanye West. And we also went to a, a religious school, a very conservative religious school. And we're from a conservative religious family, even though neither of us practice anymore. Um, we're from a Mormon family. And so there was just a part of it of, we're apologizing for pop culture. Like we're here to tell you why these are important things to pay attention to, why they're fun, why Kanye West is a genius, and we're just pop apologists. Um, so that was the 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 reason and, by the name. Yeah, I mean, Lauren and I used to call each other every single. Well, we still call each other every single day now. You know, many times a day because we share a business. <laughs> but you know, and this this is the stuff that we like to talk about. You know, this is our these yeah, are our God given yeah. gifts. I don't know why I got these gifts and not something you know in STEM, <laughs> but these are my gifts, and this is no, what we like to talk weird. about. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like, and it's weird. Like in a million years, would I never think that I would ever make money off of this? Like, mm -hmm. and when you be like, I, I mean, we were doing this when we made no money. We were doing this, and, yeah. And mm -hmm. I would, I would have kept doing this. I mean, so it's mm -hmm. so insane, so blessed in so many ways. Even though it's like the hardest I've worked ever in my life at something, and I still get it wrong every day. But it's like one of those things. Each day, you get to step up to a mic. But Papa Bologist, to me always like meant something where I was. You know, I always like my show was created in the things of these are the things that we are supposed to feel shame for. Like people like kind of roll their oh, eyes yeah. up at us mm -hmm, when we mm -hmm. talk about Taylor Swift, when we talk about Vanderpump rules. And my thing was lean into that shame. Don't be ashamed. Like, listen, yeah. like there are the smartest people I've ever met talking about these things. I've had the best conversations in the world. I got to meet the best people in the world because of our shared love of pop culture. So I always love pop apologists because it was like, that was what at first I felt like I would do all the time when I would get into conversations with people that would turn their nose up at, up at it. And you're like, no, this is why it's so fascinating because it holds a weird mirror up to life. 
you mm-hmm. know, no matter how crazy celebrity is. And this is what's so great about the Taylor Swift album. The tortured poets department gets released on Thursday and you know, Taylor Swift, a billionaire now, right? She's, you know, made all the right moves. She is at the height of her power. Who knows how much further she will go or wants to go. But you listen to the personal lyrics on this of like somebody that will still not shy away of be like, I'm going in. I'm going to be petty with Kim Kardashian. <laughs> oh my I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk about uh, failed relationships, even relationships that have not lasted potentially, you know, I know that there's up in the air how long she was with Maddie Healy now, but like, I'll talk about things and, and you'll see how much they mean to me. And it is wild because you're like, God, stars, they really are just like us. I mean, like this is <laughs> this person you would think from the outside has it all. And this person feels deeper than any of us do about the littlest things. I mean, isn't that wild I- to know Taylor Swift is, even is like us? I, I love her so much for that exact reason. I mean, who who among us hasn't written a 31 song album about a situation? <laughs> you know, then you can cast the first stone to quote the Bible, whatever. But it's like that, that, that this is who she is. She is messy, just like all of us. She's messy. And I feel, I just feel like when we're talking about pop culture, when we're talking about Taylor Swift, when we're talking about Vanderpump Rules, we're actually really just talking about the human experience. We're talking about betrayal, talking about love, talking about loyalty. We're talking about friendship. We're actually just talking about ideas through the lens of gossip. And I actually think gossip is a pejorative term that's been used to like denigrate the conversation between women. You know, I think that there was this idea that men go talk about important things with their cigars and women go and gossip together. And it was kind of, this like patriarchal pejorative way of describing really the discussion of who can you trust who is a good person who you know in the tribe could kill you important information and guess what (laughs) we're talking about it on so good it's bad and pop apologists we're doing god's work (laughs) no i mean it would but it is like god it's so interesting I know we keep saying that it's so interesting, but it just really is. Like the deeper I get into it, the more it's like, man, we really are all the same. Now I want to hit the listeners. Mm -hmm. If you don't know, Tortured Poets Department came out on Thursday, right? So this was already like an album out. You can get the vinyl. There's like seven different vinyls. There's all the the normal Taylor Swift of it all. 2 a.m. She drops, uh, what, how many? 11, 12 more tracks. So it's a 31 track album, anthology album now that she drops out of nowhere. And I'm sitting here trying to finish a Valley recap on Thursday night, realizing, (laughs) oh my God, I don't, I, I mean, almost, I'm like, God, now it's feeling like work. I'm like, I just want to sit here with my headphones and enjoy this. And now I've got so many other, and by the way, the second part of the album, I think I almost like better than the first part of the album. But the other concept, when we talk about this, isn't it weird? I was thinking about this in terms of Beyonce's Cowboy Carter a couple of weeks ago. What happened to the days that we sit and sit with something and digest it before we actually re- like uh, write all our think pieces mm-hmm. on it before we give our oh snap gosh. judgments? Like there have been so many albums that I've sat with that I've appreciated more over time. Like I remember like Radiohead back in the day, like at least like Kid A, this album that at the time I really hated upon first listen. And then like six months, a year later, it meant so much more to me. And now 20 years later, oh, I just, I love it so, so much. And sometimes I feel like we, pop culture almost eats itself now. It's going so fast that we already determined, like I already woke up on Friday too. This album's horrible. This mm-hmm. album, she's mm-hmm. she's she's locked in the same sound. She needs to stop working with Jack Antonoff, the producer. <laughs> yeah. What are your, I guess, snap judgment takes, and what do you think about that? Like, do you think that we just don't sit with anything anymore? It was funny. I saw a comment on Reddit because I googled. Yeah, you know, I read, went on Reddit to look for a tortured poets department, and someone wrote. Um, they wrote, has anyone done a breakdown of the album? And they wrote it at like April 19th at noon. The album had been out for 12 hours and they were wondering <laughs> where the breakdown was. And I'm just like, that's actually the pace of consume. That's the consumer's demand, that newness and that freshness and that, you know, hot take immediately. And I think that we're in an interesting situation, both, you know, all three of us, where we are trying to provide commentary, but we're also trying to be thoughtful. And mm-hmm. you're right. Like this album, it actually does require, I would say, an eighth listen, a tenth listen. It is not something that right off the bat, I think, is comprehensible. At least it wasn't to me. It took me a minute to really get through it because it's quite surprising from Taylor. 
Well, and just the amount too. I mean, just the amount the of sheer things that volume. you have to, right. the volume of it. And she does this every time. Like, I mean, she, she seems like it, it almost seems like this just spills out of her so easily. And I'm probably, that's so not a good thing because I'm sure she puts everything into it, but you see other people struggle with writer's block. And this seems like it's just doesn't it, but it's interesting. Even us talking about it right now, I can already see the comments of people like, well, I hate Taylor Swift move on. Well, I'm sorry. You have to pay attention to Taylor Swift because she is at the forefront of pop culture and it touches everything else. Mm -hmm. It's just like the Kardashians at a certain time, but the Kardashians don't have a specific, specific talent, except business is a talent, I guess. But mm -hmm. Taylor, there's an artist in there. So you have to talk about it because now it touches film it touches music, it touches yep. literature, it touches football, it touches everything pop culture. And Kim was at this for a time too. You you had to talk about the Kardashians because it involves sports, finance, music. Uh, TV, music. Exactly. So this to me is a perfect pop culture topic. She ensconces everything. Like she's supposed to be Dazzler in the new uh, Wolverine Deadpool movie that's coming out this summer. She, and there was supposedly an Easter egg in this album uh, with oh the gosh. lyric dazzled and she's going to play this superhero named dazzler and that's why back in the really? day you saw her hanging with hugh jackman and the director sean levy who directed mm. this they went to one of the chiefs games in new york together and that was another confirmation so you're going to see her back on the movies that's the one place she hasn't really conquered because of the movie cats and the other movies <laughs> like right. yeah, that's the, the she's waiting for that hit but sorry but like that's how i feel like is that you have to talk about taylor swift she has to be part of this conversation i i, I completely agree i also just want to say i think that it must take a lot more energy to hate taylor swift than to at least try to like her like people who just openly hate her or think that she's talentless like i just i i feel bad for them and i feel like that opinion says more about them than it does about taylor swift do you agree, yeah. Lauren? Uh, I think that there's, I think that, I think that Taylor Swift, there's an internalized misogyny and I'm honestly not a super woke person. So I feel like I'm sounding like I'm like a super woke right now, but I'm not like, I feel like I'm, I'm so I, I feel like I'm a pretty much a centrist when I like to think about all issues. But when it comes to Taylor, I think that it's very easily to easy to be dismissive, to think this is a girl seeing about her heartbreaks. Ugh, you know, to be put off by that. And I do think that's internalized misogyny. And I think that a lot of people need to break past that because what they will find when they break past it is really, really, really great music. And people who say they don't like her, I just guarantee you they actually haven't listened to her music. Yeah. They might have listened to a few singles like Shake It Off, which I agree actually is corny and I don't want to hear again. And I think that, <laughs> yeah, people just aren't paying attention. And you do yourself a favor, I think, when you pay attention closely because you will find really good art. And then also you won't be annoyed at your entire news feed because yeah. like it or not, she's here to stay. Yeah. Yeah. No, and that's the other thing too, is that just because we love her so much, the people that love her, that doesn't dismiss her from actual honest criticism. You know, there mm -hmm. are things that I think can be brought to the conversation. Like I do understand in a way, listening to the first half of the album going, I've heard a lot of these sounds before, but I'm somebody that likes that sound. I'm somebody mm. that actually, so I'm like, oh, hell yeah, new lyrics to a similar sound. But, mm. you know, like that's also just on a first listen. So that's the thing. If you, she has our attention enough that you want to keep diving in to actually discover more things. But I don't think that dismisses her from honest criticism, from, from things that actually mean things. And that's what I think sometimes it takes a minute to actually. And I do wonder if you get to this stage and you've trusted your gut and your gut has led you to this point in life. How hard is it for her to accept criticism? Who she actually mm -hmm. does trust in her life to accept that? Because, uh, you know, Jack Antonoff, obviously a trusted collaborator. And they, I mean, to me, Folklore is one of the best albums of all time. I mean, I just can't believe like that was mind blowing for me to hear her change her sound in that way. I do sometimes wonder if, you know, if and when she will change her sound. And I think sometimes mm -hmm. this is the criticism with this album. So I almost feel like she loves when a gauntlet is thrown down and I can't, I can't wait to see what's possibly next because I think she'll potentially really change a sound at some point and everybody's going to be blown away again. What do you guys think? I'll just I mean, say, I think that yeah, go ahead. I'll just really quick. Um, 
so to your point about Jack Antonoff, I, I feel like I was actually thinking about this today. Like if there was ever a time where Jack Antonoff like pushes back because this album is very long and we, Lauren and I just recorded like an hour and 15 episodes. 15 minute episode about every single song. Okay. And so that's great to know too, you guys, but after yeah. you listen to this, when do you guys release your episode? So it's going to be up tonight. So it should be. Okay, up so when, that's perfect. Uh, yeah. So you'll be able to hear you guys go to them right after you listen to this and, and they'll talk Taylor. Yeah. Well, yeah. we have our breakdown and all, mm-hmm. so just, all that is to say, there are some, some tracks on the album that Lauren and I think could have used an editor. Maybe, you know, maybe leave them behind, you know, on the cutting room mm-hmm. floor. And mm-hmm. I do, I do wonder if there is anyone in her close circle pushing back on her. Yeah, I I completely agree. And I think that, Ryan, you're so right that she she it's fair to criticize because some of these songs, in my opinion, are actually straight up bad. Like the alchemy, the love song for Travis Kelsey. The I think there's <laughs> lyrics that are like, you know, leave them on the bench, warm in the benches. Yeah. Like, you know, I- I'm just I'm just like, I didn't want actually a football love song, but this is what I got. <laughs> and it's tough. It's tough. And it puts if the NFL in a- if the NFL uses the alchemy in next season, I'm gonna like oh my I'm gonna gosh. Ride. I'm out. Like Friday really? Night Lights is the closest thing I wanted to that. And I got that. Okay, just leave it at Friday Night Lights. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there are certain songs like Down Bad where she says, um, you know, I'm down bad or she says, um, uh, I'm down bad crying at the gym. Fuck it if I can't have him. I get that she's trying to, you know, show us that this heartbreak felt like teenage love. Okay, that makes sense. And she's going to kind of do this teenage heartbroken song that's self-aware. But to people who are listening who don't really understand the, the project she's engaged in, I think that what they hear is, oh, this is corny angsty lyrics from a 34 year old how yeah. embarrassing i mean i like that lyric a, yeah. i like that lyric for what it's worth yeah yeah well crying at the gym <laughs> though i'm just like well in my head i'm like taylor's at a 24 hour fitness right now <laughs> like Taylor, taylor's she had like a, a planet she, fitness where, where is she at Equinox. what gym is she at like yeah I know. It's like oh Taylor, my gosh taylor's just there on a friday night no there, there are so many things and then in the pop culture element of course the one big thing that a lot of people are talking about um Thank you, Amy, the song, because yeah. she, in an East, a uh, very obvious Easter egg, in the title of the song, capitalizes three letters that spell out K I M Kim. And that obviously is Kim Kardashian. There's a lyric in there of, you know, your kids will be com- coming home singing my song and only us will realize it's about you or something to that nature. And I think, wow. We've now entered the phase of two billionaire females fighting. We, we're at it again. We've pitted two women against each other. Now, I am fully in Taylor's side of this. And like, I love, like, I do not agree with Kim re editing the message back in the day about Kanye and the permission to use the song on fame, like to talk about her on Famous the way that Kanye did. But it's wild to see how much, and this is how deeply she feels, is that she will be messy in public. Like, we all know this is about Kim Kardashian. And I can't tell, do you think Kim Kardashian is really upset right now? Or do you think her and Kris Jenner are like, hell yeah, baby, we got a new season of Kardashians (laughs) coming out in May. That's a great Hulu promotion. 100%. All this does is help the Kardashians who, I'm sorry, don't create art to stay relevant. They create drama to stay relevant. Yeah, And, And I guess nice shapewear, but I'm sorry, like... Taylor is only helping the Kardashian empire with these with these releases. And for me, it's another point where it's time to reel Taylor back and have an honest editor in their room that's like, I get you feel all these feelings. No one's going to be able to relate to being bullied out of like, you know, the height of your pop career in 20, in 2019 <laughs> by Kim Kardashian. This isn't going to hit everyone like it's hitting you. And this belongs in a private music library on your phone. Um, well, that's or, really what or behind a pay, or behind a Patreon paywall or something. Literally on, get like, that yeah. Patreon girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor's like, like, do I've that. had explosive growth this year. <laughs> by, by the way, Taylor starts coming for you guys. She does a Kate Middleton series. I, Series, you know <laughs> please taylor actually please do not get on patreon we please we, we need patreon we don't need any more competition little guys. <laughs> seriously um, also if I you, think if you sorry was that also oh, i was it's, i think it's hilarious that she thinks that no one else will know what that song's about even though she literally spells it out like northwest is going to know how to read 
I probably already, <laughs> already knows how to read. I, I have a feeling. I feel like Kim's like held North back a couple of years just so she doesn't read things, you know, like right, Kim, right. remember that podcast interview Kim did a couple of years ago where she said she has like such a stranglehold on the schools that these kids kids mm -hmm. go to and she knows exactly what information is going in there and i just like for kim it's so wild to think about her life because every time she has to hand the kids to kanye she must be going like, like oh man all my work potentially being undone i have to find out what they talked about when they get back like i don't think kim misses kanye at all in terms of romance but i do think it's like this weird albatross now around her neck for the rest of her life having yes. to like deal with the ups and downs of the kanye experience and you know like what the kid because north obviously is in a deep love with her dad which uh, you know that's normal um but you know now uh, north is going to have her own album kanye said you know like what it was the kindergarten and drop out or the what was it some oh silly title <laughs> like college but you know what i'm saying like oh yeah exactly yeah. it's just so it's so funny to think about like kim as successful as you are you do have to like you'll, you'll always have that kanye in your life or taylor no matter how successful she is she will always have that kim in her life that she mm -hmm. feels like that's my mortal enemy yeah i really wonder you know when i wake up and i have my very normal life and kim kardashian and taylor swift wake up and they you know live in their homes of billionaires and they have everything at their disposal i really wonder what the emotional swings are like and if really there's almost any difference and i think that is what's the most interesting thing about this is if you look at taylor and you look at kim both of them seem low key miserable about some certain things and they might actually be less happy than most people. And that's stars. And they're they, just like us. They're just like, I mean, you're like miserable. I'm I mean, miserable. I'm like, like <laughs> I know I wouldn't actually say I'm miserable at all. So I actually think like they're literally like, I, I think it can be, I think that that life actually can be extremely taxing and having yeah. those big public beefs, you know, having to deal with an ex-husband who you think is mentally ill and what he, you know, what he's going to be doing or saying to your children. It's just, I don't wish that on anyone and no amount of money I think would make anyone want to put up with that experience. Yeah, no, I think I, we're, we're also in the wild West in terms of celebrity and pop culture, where I think Taylor Swift wants to be looked at as a mixture of artists. Like, you know, one, including like being like Joni Mitchell, you know, like Joni mm -hmm. Mitchell from the seventies of like such an, uh, you know, iconic artist. But the thing is Joni Mitchell for all her success, never had the success of Taylor Swift. So you can't even like, it's so even unfair to make comparisons like that, but she's at such a level where Joni Mitchell never had like seven different variants of a vinyl that were released in target. Like Joni Mitchell never was a time where like when she was coming up that, you know, like I got a target exclusive and I'm also throwing this and I'm also doing this and I'm sending a package to Spencer Pratt saying, thanks for like being a fan right. and all of these things. And just to think at that level of what she's doing right now, I mean, she's currently on a world tour. I'm going to Stockholm in a month to see her live at oh the Eras amazing. tour because I missed, uh, I missed the U S run and I'm so excited to see that. But I just wonder for me, the big question is like, where do you, where do you call it a day and get back to yourself? And I always relate it to reality TV because Tom Sandoval on Vanderpump rules, uh, this is the weirdest comparison ever. He always talks about 11 seasons in on this show. He looks at his life, even off camera as a reality show. He always thinks Ugh. in terms of storylines. And I said, mm. of course you do that. That's why your life is so messed up. When will Taylor Swift unplug and get into like, you know, she talks about, I mean, this album, it's over like talking about rings, talking about like how much marriage seems to mean to this, this girl, w you know, where does she go from here? Do you guys think? It's funny that you say that because I, I remember, so I saw her at the Ares tour early on and I remember this is when her and Joe were not, not broken up or that news hadn't broken. So that's Joe Alwyn. You guys, if you don't know, you obviously know she was in a six year yeah. relationship with him. Yeah. Yes. And I remember thinking this is her swan song. This tour, this is her going out. You know, this is this is the era's tour. This is like she's going to take a solid break now. After that, she's going to settle down with him. Yada yada yada. Um, and then literally the opposite happened. The opposite. She went harder. Everything. She went harder. She went, she went even harder. It, she exploded in a way that I didn't think was even possible. I I thought we had hit like the supersonic Taylor verse before, and and we weren't even there yet. And so I I don't know. I don't know if I even see a world where she slows down. Lauren, yeah, what do you think? I think that she is 
in her mind, her life is about songwriting and it's not even about being Taylor Swift. It's about music. And so I think we will, she's, I think she's going to go in the way of a Dolly Parton where she will be performing till the end. I think she will be writing music till the end. I think that Taylor is here to stay. I'm not sure, you know, obviously you're yeah. the, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think she's going away anytime soon. I think she's going to be writing music forever and putting out new music forever. I just think that it's, it's built into the fabric of who she, who she is. And it's very, it's similar on some level to Tom Sandoval in so much that their lives are in the public eye, I suppose. He's going to love very, this comparison for the rest of By the way, he's like, he's like, hell yeah, dude. We have similar music styles too. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan, for finally standing up for me, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's also very different because you know, this is what Taylor does, I think, regardless of if anyone's even listening. And I think Tom Sandoval needs that check. He needs that next season. Like, what scares me for these reality stars, and I'm curious mm -hmm. what you think about this, Ryan, is it seems like so many of them trade years that they would be building a really serious career um, and kind of building their future for short-term gains. And they they try to translate that into a long career. But Spencer Pratt talks about, about this a lot. Once you're off television... It's a, you know, your glide path with, with obscurity becomes perilously close. Um, and it's only a matter of time really before, you know, you're so much less relevant and you have so many fewer opportunities. Um, and so I, I wonder, do you think that it's even possible for, like, do you think that these people that have been on VPR for 11 seasons, are they going to be able to parlay this into lifelong careers and build like everything well, in their that's, lives? That's why Scandaball... Well, that's why Scandal was so important. It gave them a second shot. It gave them because, you know, by no means, like the show was still on, but it wasn't relevant in the way that it's relevant no, now. Yeah. It was and that's what's so interesting. But that's what's so interesting about pop culture is that one move, even for you guys. Think about if you had toiled away your words in another four years. At a certain yeah. point, you might yeah. have been like, let's dial it back, maybe do one episode a week. We love, we're always mm -hmm. going to be family. We mm -hmm. got, the, you know, you just never <laughs> know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not going to divorce in that way. So the thing is, though, like, so they got this shot. They got this shot over like really emotional turmoil around really. And that's what good reality TV does is profit off of somebody's really personal pain. So they got this one shot. And that's what you're seeing right now from this cast is everyone fighting. Is everyone yes. fighting over brand deals of Chili's ads, of this, of Broadway, <laughs> mm -hmm. of this. Even the artist formerly known as Raquel, Rachel Levis, she is now monetized with Rachel Go goes rogue, which I actually did a Patreon episode because I thought her last episode was really fascinating because it's so meta. This past week's Vanderpump Rules, they talk about Bethany Frankel's podcast of Rachel going on it. So it was all of this. And then she had, she got triggered by that and then released a podcast of her reactions to them reacting to her podcast. So I had to release a podcast of me reacting to Rachel's <laughs> podcast. Where it, it just, it, it's inception. Oh, and there's a, a market point. for it all. Oh I'll my be God. Oh my God. Every single one of them. Yeah. Oh my God. But the thing is, is that she's talking about this and it's like anything you realize, Oh my God, girl, you should have just been on the reality. Cause it's like, this is dragging you back down into the muck and the mire. You're like now having to defend yourself. You're actually not, you know, like all the therapy in the world, you're still like kind of going back to these reality show tropes. It's just that you're not monet you're monetizing in a much yeah. smaller way, even though your yeah. podcast is, but yeah, but you, that's what you're seeing with Vanderpump rules is that Listen, every year we get 60 new Bachelor and Bachelorette contestants. We have 90 Day Fiance people. We have we have so many people that are vying for those skin like for those little tummy tea ads. Like it's it's mm -hmm. really wild. Then you have people like us on another tier that are part of this commenting on this and it's mm -hmm. really wild for reality shows. I just with the VPR cast especially, it's just like such a great example is like it almost encourages them to have personal pain and they never get yes. out of a vortex of being yeah. able to actually live a real life because all they're doing is thinking about relationships in terms of storylines. Like mm -hmm. Tom Sandoval has a new girlfriend right now and I will bet you dollars to donuts that he's already asked her like, would you consider filming? Like this isn't going to work <laughs> if you can't film. This isn't going to work if you can't film because he's so concerned about that. Yeah. And so there's yeah. two types of reality stars. The ones that want to share everything, even if it makes them look like an idiot, and the ones that want the money and the fame, but they try to fight sharing the real things. And I yeah. think you would even throw potentially Kyle Richards in this season from that of like, I don't want to share mm -hmm. uh, everything, but I really want to mm -hmm. be here. It's really fascinating. But Sorry. I know, by the way, I'm just geeking out with these ladies. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this, but like, I just love talking about this stuff. Are you guys having a good time? Are you? Yes. Good? Oh my gosh. I'm this loving is, okay, it. Okay. This is, okay, good. no, this is, this is everything. Like we, this, 
Okay, I good, mean, good. yeah, unpacking this is, is fascinating. I get so excited um, talking about this stuff. With, like, yeah. It's just so fun. I mean, um, the, the VPR cast is like especially concerning, I think, because also none of them seem to have made like smart financial moves at all. Like they're all still living in like very sad, even the Valley too. Like some of the, you know, the some of the homes in the Valley are very nice. I'm a renter. I live in literally like four, 400 square feet in New York city. So I don't have much of a leg to stand on, but like you look at like, just like their lives. And you're like, how have these people been getting a TV paycheck, which maybe isn't crazy, but like they have not been able to like parlay that into just like better financial moves. And that's what scares me for them. It's just like, my gosh, they really need to have these personal problems to keep their storylines going. Like mm -hmm. to keep this paycheck. Yeah, I would love a character on this show next season that gets introduced as like a financial consultant. That actually, it's like the people that like talk to the NFL players of like, hey guys, you're going to be taking a lot of hits. We want to yes. set you up for financial success. I would love a character on all of these Bravo shows that just a financial consultant that comes and gives a group talk to all the housewives and be like, this is called an IRA Roth. This is yes. called a, like, I would love to like, like because you do. And then we get worried. Like we have to take care of these people for the rest of our lives. No, we lives. literally we are. Uh, we're, we're, we're not trash talking. We're actually concerned. We're like worried. we no, I, uh, are worried. Like Lala like, second child. That's on about us. Taylor. Yes, we don't have to right. worry about Taylor and Beyonce. They're good. I do have to worry about Lala. I have to worry about Sheena. I have to worry about all the Bachelor yes. contestants. I, I mean, to, and it, it's scary. Hearing that Jax has to do so many cameos just to like keep things afloat. Like I'm, I'm stressed. I'm stressed. <laughs> I, mean, I hate that man, but I'm stressed for him. And I gotta, I, you know, we gotta keep watching. Everyone's gotta keep watching. Well, the valley. I'm stressed. You guys. The Valley, uh, they're five episodes in, and now I think this is going to be, I made a post over the weekend, this is going to be, I think, the number one most anticipated reunion of yes. any first season show. People are arguing that Real Housewives of New Jersey, of course, but over the weekend, you guys, uh, Jax Taylor, he is at a promotional event in Montreal with Tom Sandoval and Tom Schwartz. The Three Stooges are at it again, and we found out over the, the weekend that Brittany... Uh, they, we know they're separated, but Brittany unfollowed Lori K. Now, Lori K is a public relations person. Uh, I've gotten clients on, I've gotten her clients on my shows before. She's been out there for a while. They've always been with Lori K. Jackson, Lori K go way back. There's a lot of rumors going around. The rumors, like Meredith Marks would say, about <laughs> this relationship. Now, uh, some, I don't know who put this out there or who found out, but Brittany unfollowed Jax and Lori K. We found out Lori Gay, Lori K was in Montreal. Now Lori K has a family. She has children, all of these things. So I don't want to go too in the weeds with this, but there was a lot of allegations and rumors about, uh, potentially inappropriate conduct between the two, potentially in terms of hooking up Jax then unfollowed Brittany. These are people with a child. Like these child. are people, and this is, uh, this was my prediction when the Valley, when I first heard it was coming on the air, I said, watch Jax is literally going to do this show and risk, like risk his personal life for another chance at fame for another chance. He's, he's going to blow his life up. And in fact, I think he's actually doing this. Like, I don't think he really does. I think he loves Brittany, but I don't think he likes her at all. I don't think he's attracted to her at all. And I think he almost went on this show to be able to like have her move. He made her do the dirty work and like move past him, but it is wild. So I'm curious. Did you guys hear about this at all? And I know yeah. not everybody watches the Valley, but did, did you hear about this? I, yes, I heard about this. I also, I, I've been watching the Valley and I've also, it surprised me at how good it is because I was not yeah. anticipating it to be good. And it, you know, it was kind of one of those shows where after VPR like finished and it just automatically came on and then I never turned it off. Um, so I really liked it, but I think this scandal with the publicist is shocking to me because the, the idea that somebody who would know Jax Taylor up close and personal and who would choose to sleep with him <laughs> or choose to like blow up their life for that man. I mean, I think Jax Taylor is even worse than Tom Sandoval, if that's possible. No, because that's what I'm saying. I've said, way to go, Tom Sandoval. You've unleashed an un like you've unleashed a mortal evil into this world again. Like you've unleashed yes. this scandal. Like all of Literally. these people out of the dredges and be like we're back and Jax yes. has been fighting for this moment and that's what's so wild because he he is he's top dog when it comes to he's, Jaggery. He's the worst of the worst and I mean if you watch this season the way that he talks to Britney about I mean and he's always talked to her like this but just seeing it again on my TV screen I'm just like you know this man has grown up you know he lives in the valley now he's got a son and he is he is the same dog who is just as vile and disgusting. And I, yeah, I, I'm so happy that Brittany has left him and I hope she like finds someone really nice who, you know, won't rot in hell. Um, <laughs> yeah. but I just like, 
yeah, I it's it's wild to me. I mean, I don't know what you've been thinking about like Kristen Doty and like her whole journey on this because for me, she's kind of hard to watch because I just feel she's like an empath. She's Doty's tough. an empath. She's a, yeah. well, see, Doty, you realize, but that's the thing. We were so used to watching them on Vanderpump Rules. It is like weirdly entertaining to watch them again, but it's how yes. it's so funny how you're like, oh, they're still very similar. Like, we, I it just shows you how little we change in our lives. Mm-hmm. Like, we can like mm-hmm. lose weight. We can do things to our face. Is we can maybe go to therapy and try to emotionally connect with ourselves, but we only change like five, you know, five percent here, three percent there. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I think that's so wild to like when people come back of like, I've really learned all of the lessons, <laughs> I've completely changed. I'm like, no, because because you're still making fascinating reality television. So right. I guess it's the it's like the viewer, like we win in a sense, but that's the other thing too. Like Taylor Swift, I can go away from her music and I can sometimes feel really good. Watching Vanderpump Rules or The Valley or certain reality shows, no. Now I go away feeling bad, but I've almost conflated the two that they're they're, they're similar. That I'm like, okay, well, I felt something. Like I felt something. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, Vanderpump Rules and The Valley are studies, but they're not art to me. Like I, all, all I feel is, is happiness for my own life after watching those shows and just like contentment for like the, the you know, like the private joys that I have. I just... I, I feel so grateful to not be on either of those shows when I'm watching. I'm so yeah, curious no, if there's any chance you guys think that this is that the affair and like unfollowing each other and all of that, if it's fake for the show, because when so that's where we out, get into conspiracy like, theories. Yeah, like that was just like there's no way that Jackson and Brittany they just so happen to be breaking up the during thing. the first yeah. season of this show. Yeah, I, and it just feels like this could all be orchestrated. I thought but that same- I thought that when the news broke, but then when I watched them on on the show, it's done. It's dead. Well, yeah, COA. But- Totally. I, I I agree with like, yeah, that was my sentiment too. I was like, oh, all of a sudden when the show releases, now we find them separating. Oh, and now, yeah. we're, like, mm-hmm. now we're gonna watch. But then you watch them like with each other and you're like, oh, oh, they have real issues. Like they have real yeah. problems. It's like there's another couple on that show, Michelle and Jesse Lally, and you're like, oh, you from episode one, you're like, oh, they hate each other. Like they hate <laughs> each other. And now they're separated. They announced they were separated before the show started. So I was like, is this? but then you watch them, you're like, oh, they and by the way, Michelle Lally, it was like on the valley this week, they bleeped out this director that potentially Michelle was like hooking up with maybe Mm -hmm. uh people were saying it was michael bay or quentin tarantino reddit threads were like going crazy about this but they were bleeping it out and they even um put a little covering over the mouth so you couldn't like see what the what word they were saying so we don't know people were really going hard for michael bay but people were going hard for tarantino but then michelle lally she is dating a guy in fact she uh i just saw this this morning when I was perusing the internet and she is dating a guy named Aaron Nosler. He's a financial advisor, which is great for reality shows. So hopefully he can financial (laughs) advise, but she looks really happy in this photo. And I'm like, man, she, she deserves to be happy because that Jesse Lally seems horrible to her and seems to want to keep her in that relationship, even though he hates her. And I think that's really fat, but I'm saying I, I agree with you. It seems so staged, but also people are saying that about Scandal. And I even yeah. knew behind the scenes that it was real. Like I, like, that's the one yeah. thing like, and I'm not proud about that, but like, I even knew that it was real and that people like would swear up and down like, Oh, this was all say, you think these people would be able to stage it to this degree. Now, Spencer right, no. Pratt, like, I know we keep bringing them up. He has such an interesting mind that even when he tried to stage photos of him and Heidi, they were like so, so tongue in cheek that we even knew it was like, so like, Oh, here we're at a pumpkin patch today, you know, taking right. paparazzi photos, you know, I think it's like we want to believe that everything could potentially be a Truman show and everything's like Mm -hmm. set up and staged. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, they're trying to like just film a show. There's like union workers trying to like clock out. (laughs) Like it's, it's not, you know, there isn't, there's writer's rooms in terms of like suggestions of where we can go in storyline, but it's not, I mean, I think maybe one day it will be, and maybe we've had that in the past, but I don't Mm -hmm. think it's on Vanderpump rules in the Valley. I could be wrong. I do. Okay. I have a question then. And by the way, I just want to say a moment of Thanksgiving. I'm so grateful that the Valley is turning out to be a great show. I can't wait to watch. Um, But I also wonder, I'm curious if you think that if there's any possibility Stassi will join the Valley now that it's like so hyped and people really like it. Like I, I almost feel like she wouldn't have deigned to do it while it was like up and coming. But now that it's like people are so in- into it and excited, I almost wonder if we'll see her in oh, season two. That's a, 
That's a great question. I don't think uh, there's a chance in hell, but okay. what I will say, just like with Scandaball, Scandaball was able to, because I did a thing on ratings this week of show ratings. Scandaball was such a success that it finally gave the opportunity for Alex Baskin, the producer of Vanderpump Rules, to actually green light the Valley. So they had to like throw into production really quick, right? So the Valley now is successful. So I think you'll never see Stassi on that show, but what you will see, Stassi announced her third book this week. That's coming mm -hmm. out in May. And then what you will see, I bet is that Stassi will sell a show this mm. month. I bet really? she already has a show that she is like in her head produced. Oh, interesting. And I bet there's already, like I was I was uh, there the day I was uh, co-hosting on Jeff Lewis Live when Stassi was in a couple of months ago. And she was talking about that because she was offered the Valley. She was one of the yeah. offers. Oh, yeah. right. and she was like, she was just like, my, my, my life isn't connected in that way with them anymore. Yeah. And, Wait. you know, well, what's that? Oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm totally interrupting. No, Lord, what? No, no, please, oh, what'd you say? What? I just want to say I was listening to that episode and it was so funny how Jeff was trying to, like the whole time I felt like he was like trying to pepper her that like, you should try to get back on Vanderpump Rules. Like here's the, you know what I mean? And she was like, listen, I don't even want to go on it. Like stop yes. telling me and you need to like stop, ma start maneuvering to get back on the show. <laughs> Shut up. That was so funny. Anyway, well, Stassi's right. the one person that whether you like her or don't like her, she doesn't need it. Like Stassi yeah. has actually built her own lane. And I mm -hmm. think that's why Lala, like people like Lala are so attracted to her because I think Lala like probably loves Stasi, but also from a business perspective, I think she like you see the people she's drawn to, like her, Heather McDonald, things like people that have started their own thing. Because yes. I think Lala is looking way down the line of like yeah. when this is over, and uh, and I think Lala's made so many horrible moves on Vanderpump Rules this season. But I think that's her like really trying to flex some kind of business muscle. I don't even yes. feel like. Sheena, I was on Sheena's podcast this week and she was like, no, it really comes from the heart. And I was like, it doesn't read like it comes from the heart. Mm -hmm. It reads like their actual like PR moves. What comes from the heart? Lala's moves well, or? Lala's moves. Like when she's like coming down on Ariana or when she's like, like, oh, like right. trying to empathize with Tom Sandoval. To me, those have not re registered as real. They've totally. registered as, and, and, but Sheena was like, no, they are completely real. I'm and I was like, okay, cool. Hmm. I don't, I completely, yeah, I don't, I don't buy that from Sheena at all because like, if you remember, this was, this, this filming took place three months later after the Lala eviscerated <laughs> Sandoval at the no, reunion. It doesn't make sense for her to be like, I'm <laughs> soft now. Like I, you know, I had a, right. a couple good therapy sessions and I totally get his point of view. Why are you being so hard on him? You know, I just, I, I, I don't buy no. it. It really feels like production or, or maybe it was, she was just like, you know what, this, in this next season in order for me to like be relevant i'm gonna have to take it upon me katie won't do it sheena won't do it you know as much to to befriend tom sandoval or to at least you know accept him back into the fold or criticize and or criticize ariana she knows it's an ensemble cast and if the show if they won't if everyone won't film together they don't have a show and so yeah. that's she's most concerned with this show continuing and cashing her paycheck while she builds her lane that's we'll talk about internalized about but but talk about internalized misogyny. We're three months after it. Finally, Ariana does film with Tom and she's like angry because why wouldn't you be angry at somebody that does this? Right. And then people, people come down on her like, oh, way too angry, right. way too angry, girl, right. way too, right. like you can't, like sometimes if you're a woman, like I love this, I'm mansplaining what it's like to be a woman <laughs> to women, you guys. I, I realize how insane this is, Tell us but it's more. like, some, hey, do you ladies realize that sometimes you can't win? Have you ever realized that? <laughs> hey, what's the deal with you what? guys never being able to win? <laughs> Smile sorry, more. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, yeah. Don't five stars on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I agree with what you were, I think, about to say, which is that, you know, Ariana gets lit on fire for being too angry, but I just so appreciate her being like, no, I'm not actually going to take the high road and smile and wear the things people want me to wear and say the things they want me to say and be classy and be above it. No, I'm going to Alanis Morissette this shit. I'm going to burn yes. this house down. I'm going to punish him. I'm going to, I'm not going to move out of our house he's gonna see every day what he's done i feel like so many women have been burned and it's cathartic to see a woman who's like yeah i've been burned and i'm gonna burn you right back but also not even also, that. It's not like she's going down on other podcasts, bad mouthing him. Like no, she's right, not like right. she's not a part of that kind of like industrial complex of true, like true. I'm showing up uh doing full PR, like right. you know, every show in the world to bad mouth Tom Sandoval. She's like, I'm just filming the show. I'm like, I want to stay right. in my house. 
Right, also, right. It would, it would be a different situation, or it would be a different situation if Tom Sandoval acted at all remorseful. But the man mm-hmm. cannot feel remorseful or take. Any he doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. He cannot get it through his thick skull what he has done, and it, the fact that he still thinks he's like a scapegoat in some way is like hilarious to me. And like he's just he's just he doesn't have two feet like on planet Earth. And there so was a scene with DJ J- James him. Kennedy. That scene with DJ James Kennedy and Tom Sandoval this week uh, at his sound stage where he was practicing yes. with his band. It was the weirdest scene ever because it was like so DJ James Kennedy cleared Tom Sandoval. But at the same time, it was the weirdest like small dick measuring contest of all times of like, <laughs> well, do you know she never loved you? Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah, well, she told me she hoped you never actually did quit uh, drinking so she could leave you. It was the weirdest <laughs> thing. And I'm like, DJ James Kennedy cleared him. So it was fascinating, but it was funny like having and I always wondered like what Rachel thought in in her podcast, she talked about, you know, watching these two men. And I was like, I wonder in her baser instincts, like that first instinct, if it was pretty funny and kind of like, uh, wow, look at these two men, like kind of talking, talking shit about each other because a little old me, you know, who's afraid mm-hmm. a little old me as Taylor yeah. would say. <laughs> I was so upset on Rachel's behalf because I just felt, and I was so upset on her behalf because I just felt like, Tom never gave her really the validation that he was in love with her until she was done with him. And it's such a classic narcissist move that I'm never going to, I'm going to keep leading you on until you're not giving me the attention I crave. And then I'm going to give you, you know, that validation. So you'll come back to me anyway. I, I, I feel enraged on her behalf to see Tom like playing woe is me about her on the show. Curious if you guys think that she will realize podcasting is a ton of work. Um, and if we'll see her back on VPR, because obviously, you know, she's well, still trying to stay relevant in this, in this that, scene. That's the, that, when I, I, I did the Patreon over the weekend, I was saying the same thing of like, listen, well, well, yes and no. Like, I feel like the thing that she won't like, she's, she's suing. So right oh, that's now, true. like she's doing the lawsuit. So I think she's cut herself off at the knees, but I think like mm-hmm. listening to her podcast, each episode as it gets further on, I'm like, girl, I could, li- I, I said this, I could literally cut out audio from her podcast and use AI tools and make it look like Rachel's doing a talking head. And I could insert them into this season of Vanderpump rules. And it would be like, she was there because she is talking the same kind of like, like yeah. here and there therapized trash. Giving talk it away in a way. For so yeah, like give it so I think like man, in some ways if the lawsuit was really designed to actually have better mental health care and better things like that, then man, go on with your bad self. But if the lawsuit was there to get money, I think she shot herself in the foot in some yeah. ways. Now, that's just my opinion. Like she might go on and be the best podcaster that we've ever seen and heard in a million years. But I just feel like in some ways, if you're going to continually go to that well, because once Vanderpump rules ends, where's the podcast go? Is she going to announce like, hey, we're doing a rewatch from season one of Vanderpump because you're going to see those clicks start to go away. You're going to see those downloads go away because mm-hmm. you're starting to talk about what you actually want to talk about, which is mental health. Does that make sense? I'm And honestly... Rachel is just not the person I want to go to for my mental health podcast. I mean, we, we saw what happened still to Jay out. She's still like, figuring it out. Like, yeah. wait, how can, it's like, I don't want Carl from Summer House giving me a sobriety <laughs> seminar yet because he's two years in. Like, you know, like yep. he's, he's still yeah. figuring things out himself. I want to be able yeah. to like trust the person I mean, like- She's also just not that captivating of a character. In she's my also opinion. just not that articulate. Is she more articulate on her podcast than she is on the show? A little bit more, but I will listen to it at like double the speed. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, like when you listen to it at the, it's, it's very plotting and I'm not trying to mm-hmm. like, I don't want to hurt her feelings or anything like that, but I, it, it, it's, she's gotten a lot better in terms of her speaking voice. Um, mm-hmm. and we've seen her work on that over years, but it's not a voice that draws me in. Like some, some people like I'll listen to like, or I'll listen to an audio book just because I love the voice. Yeah, yeah. Like that was a ladies. moment, Ryan, where I said that thing and <laughs> forgot people were listening. I was like, oh, oh, that was no shit talking that I do privately. Sometimes I forget people are listening to these no, shows. That, Apologies. No, 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 that's what you, no, no, I do, I do the same. I do. I do. No, listen, I do the same thing. It's just like, I realize like, I've gone hard on Rachel and I think she, I've deservedly gone hard on Rachel, but I'm like, if this yeah. is the path you want to go work for it. Like I know how much work we all yeah. put into our shows, like right. work for it. You have, you have a producer, yeah. you have an editor, like she's not in there editing things. Like she's editing some right. of her videos, which I was like, good for you learning that skill. 
But like, I yeah. know at the end of the night, I have to still put this in GarageBand. I have to edit things out. I have to like put it on Auphonic and like take out set. Like I have to mm-hmm. put hours of time into this after we even record. And that's the thing where I don't know if necessarily these celebrity podcasters that get their podcasts because they were on a reality show, they don't do any of that. It's yeah. not easy money. Let me let me be the first to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you guys have like five, five more minutes? I know I've gone over yeah, the hour. Totally. Are you guys yeah. you have to get out of yeah. here? Okay. Um, no. well, I just want to bring it back to Taylor Swift really quick. Um, just in the Maddie Healy of it all, because it does talk about a, a couple different relationships, Joe Alwyn, Maddie Healy, her new one, Travis Kelsey, uh, the Maddie Healy one of it all. People were like, damn, this relationship meant a lot. Something that really moved me in terms of, and I know this sounds silly, but not even like the the song but daddy i love him there is a lyric uh oh, i'd so rather good. i'd rather burn it all down i'd rather you know like in, in talking about like i'd rather burn it all down to like you know then then spend it another moment listening to you bitching and moaning almost turning the uh, mirror back to us the audience and talking yeah. about how dare you guys ever try to interfere in my romantic relationships and i would rather burn everything down than to have mm-hmm. to listen to one of your bullshit soliloquies that I will never see, which is like just Mm -hmm. everybody doing on TikTok, all of our podcasts, but just in the passion in which she sings those lyrics for me, that was one of a, that was a chill. Like I got goosebumps from listening to her say that of just a powerful statement of I'd rather burn it all down for me. That was a favorite moment. Did you guys like that moment? I had a feeling when she was dating Maddie Healy that he was going to red pill her. And I think that's exactly what happened. She seems to not give a shit about what any sort of woke mob or any sort of online chatter is trying to tell her how to live her life. I think she knows she's a good person and she doesn't need anyone else's opinions on certain things, especially you know, her, the people she loves. And so I love that song because I also find those people odious. Um, so it was very cathartic for me as well. Um, I thought, yeah, love this side of Taylor. I love that. She's not people pleasing. I love that. She's, you know, ready to burn it all down if necessary. It's so good. Very I mean, but sorry, Taylor. I still don't like Maddie. Sorry. You can't <laughs> maybe like Maddie. I still, I like some of his music, but I don't like him. It's okay. But you know, he was like, Hey, you've got to don't care. You're an artist. You don't have to care. You think Shakespeare cared? Do you think, do you think Johnny Rotten from the Sex Pistols cared, Taylor? Like, you know, he was like feeding her that kind of information. Like that's I know. Kind of I'm a typewriter. He was sipping yeah. the yeah. Kool-Aid for sure. I love it. <laughs> And then, you know, I'm like probably turned on. She was seeing him sing her lyrics at all the era's tour stops because oh, yeah. when Maddie Healy, you knew he would like, he really liked it. Like he loved the attention. He loved being there. I mean, like, and I love, mm-hmm. I was like, always wonder like Phoebe Bridgers has a really like strong friendship with Maddie Healy. I always wonder like, how is that friendship? Cause Phoebe, Phoebe Bridgers will come out like Neil Young. She'll come at like, like, uh, um, uh, Eric Clapton, like anybody that any musician from the past that has done something wrong, she will speak out like really hardcore for and i'm like where's that for maddie healy like mm-hmm. it's different when they're your friends right it's different yeah. right oh my gosh yeah um, I, so, I oh go ahead no 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 i was just saying the maddie healy of it all it just seems like that really was this big moment in her life so much so that it has more of a pressing concern on the album than joe alwyn a six-year relationship you have goodbye london a song on that album as well but it is weird. Maddie Healy gets the smallest man on earth. And Maddie Healy's aunt actually took to the press uh, page <laughs> six. Debbie. He says, you, you, you don't, she doesn't, he's not concerned about any of this. He's, 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 he's moody. You, there's so much more that you don't know. And I'm like, oh my God, we've gotten Maddie Healy's family, like talking to <laughs> the press it. now over Taylor's. It's so amazing. messy. It's well, incredible. I, I did not expect Aunt Debbie to en- enter the chat. And that was just such a blessed surprise. Aunt Debbie's yeah, going to have a podcast absolutely. by next week. You know, <laughs> Aunt Debbie <laughs> literally is coming for the pop apologist and so bad it's good. Seriously. Um, uh, so <laughs> Taylor of it all, where, where are we going to like, what do you guys have this week? What should we expect in pop culture this week? We barely scratched the surface on anything, but I was just I so know. darn happy to talk to you guys. But that's what pop culture is. There's so much to talk about all the time. And that's why we can have this many shows and this many good shows to like, kind of like, it's just fun to talk about what, what are you guys looking forward to this week and what are you guys doing on your show this week? Yeah, I think we're like, thanks so much, Ryan. And, you know, we're so happy to be here. Truly, it's been so fun chatting. We love your show. And we we like were sliding into your DMs trying to get on a few years ago. So this is just such a fun moment for us. Um, we Dude, are any, so Listen, excited. I'm I, I'm too small for you guys now. But if you ever oh, need please. anybody on your show, I'll be yeah. there in a heartbeat. If you ever, if, 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 some, if, you, fi- if you fire, uh, Chan, if you fire, uh, fire Lauren at any point, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you fill in. 
you find, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I'm working on editing. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this week, we're getting into all things Taylor. So we have right now, it'll be up for people listening, our deep dive on the Tortured Post Department. We're going to have a part two. We're going to talk about every single track. So if you want, you know, a full synthesis breakdown, deep dive on that, you can find it on our podcast this week. And then back next week, we're going to be back to regular scheduled programming. Excited to get into VPR what does that mean? again. So VPR, regular, like you know, we Housewives. really are a celebrity Housewives VPR, but we're really a, a celebrity news show yeah. specifically. We're more we do a lot of deep dives on celebrity romances. So we have a lot of evergreen shows. You can listen to like a deep dive on the Great American Romance of John F. Kennedy Jr. and Carol and Bassett, or um, the Love Triangle of Brad and Angelina and Jennifer Aniston. So we have a lot of deep dives that you can listen to. Um, so we do a mix of deep dives and then also current pop culture. It's a it's a fun time. Oh my God, the Brad Pitt, Jennifer Aniston stuff. You, I was talking about this with a friend, like those photographs of Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt on vacation, like the week that they broke Ugh. up, where it was almost like their lover's farewell weekend. And you know, he almost positioned it as, listen, we just didn't work and nothing's going out, going on with me <laughs> and Angelina. It's just like, and you almost like those photos of them like hugging on the beach. I remember this so specifically and thinking like how wild that I wonder if he's almost positioning this like, we just didn't work out, but we will always have love for each other. All the while he did, he was having a relationship with right. Angelina Jolie. So crazy. So crazy and so sad, honestly. Like I, I just, I find the whole Brad Pitt of it all to be very, very fascinating. I do wonder if... I, I wonder if Angelina, I'm curious, Ryan, for your take on this. Do you think that Brad Pitt is like guilty of the domestic violence and the child abuse I think there's, and all that stuff? That's a, yeah. Listen, and you can I will cut this out if you don't want to get into this. No, 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 right no, 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 no. I think this is great. No, this is like, I always think, I always used to joke in the earlier shows that I wanted to write one acts of places that uh, just like where I just don't know what happened specifically. Like the Beyonce Solange uh, Jay-Z mm -hmm. elevator. Ride, elevator. Or the, pri the, the private jet ride uh, of Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie and the kids. So what I, what I do, my overall thought is life is really flipping hard. Like we are mm. at we are sometimes horrible people in our lives, men and women, men and women. Mm -hmm. We will like, sometimes you, it's sometimes you'll get caught up in something and then you realize like, Oh my God, that was such a hard part of my life. So I do think there is some truth to all of this. I think it's been going on long, but I, I think there are, I think Angelina's played a part in all of this as well, but I think, you know, you can't excuse ever physical violence, but I do know that that's when he stopped drinking after that, right? He's like been sober for so many years. I don't know if we will ever find the exact truth. And I think he spent so much money in terms of just legal fees, keeping that yeah. from coming out. But I do believe that there was some sort of alleged physical violence Maybe it was just a one-time thing, even though recently I think it's come out that like Angelina Jolie put in some kind of court papers that there was ongoing abuse. Um, I'm very curious because Angelina Jolie seems like she has a very strong will and also a very good communicator that I'm curious why it's taken this long. You know, we're talking, you know, seven, eight years for things to, to come out of that nature, but I can't, I can't, I, I'm not a woman. I can't put myself in her shoes in that sense. What do you guys think? I think the proof, some of the proof, at least in the for the alleged abuse, is just that the kids are not seen with him. There is just no evidence that there is any type of relationship. In, in fact, there is evidence that, like you know, Patty they actively Patty, dislike him. Actively, yeah, they, they yeah, like on. Yeah, yeah, I saw that close friends Instagram story from yeah. Pax or something that said yeah. I hate my dad. Yeah, wild. I just anyway. think also, yeah, kids, kids are smart. You know, they, they can see through their parents' bullshit. They can see which parent is being manipulative and which parent is being too controlling and all that stuff. And so for me, it's very hard for me to imagine that Angelina Jolie has just also like, you know, conned all of her kids into the idea that Brad, mm -hmm. Brad is a bad guy, the ever charming, likable Brad Pitt. To me, there is just something super off. And I agree with Chandler. The kids but not wanting any part of him, is it? Isn't it interesting though, in terms of pop culture and the roles that 
that we play, though, is that Angelina Jolie leaned into the stereotype of the temptress. She leaned into this person of, I'm the weirdo that kisses my brother at the Academy Awards. I'm the weirdo that goes onto the red carpet with Billy Bob Thornton with Vials of Our Blood, and we're basically like humping on a red carpet. <laughs> like she leaned into those things, and yeah. I find that interesting because then it like becomes some people then put like question her because of early behavior. Right. But I will say in her defense, how many of us have not like how many of us have not kissed our siblings on a red carpet? No, like so how many of us we do get like, you know, there are phases of our lives. And I just but I mean, just in the same breath, Suri Cruz celebrated her 18th birthday mm -hmm. this week. Tom Cruise has not had any contact with Suri Cruise for almost like I thought it was like a decade or something. And he was actually at Victoria Beckham's 50th yes. birthday party where all the Spice Girls reunited this weekend. He was stumbling out of there in a tuxedo instead of at his own daughter, Suri Cruise's 18th birthday. So speak about that in terms of Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise. These are old school movie stars that we don't really we there's a lot of speculation about both of these men and we don't know how they operate except that they're always smiley and having a fun thing in front of the cameras i mean they're scientology so is one hell of a drug <laughs> and brad pitt's not even a scientologist tom Cruise. i mean it's just right. like that's what's so what but it but yeah that's so wild i mean there's the reality is is that there's really everyone is a villain in these stories even angela and jolie you know it's obvious that she was having an affair with brad pitt even though she swore up and down that she wasn't a year later she's pregnant months after they break up they're on the beach in kenya together photographed um and then they play that you know the, the they play that domestic scene out in w magazine and that famous spread angela and jolie was 100 percent the temptress and absolutely you know played an active role in breaking up that marriage and so i think that the key takeaway is we actually have no idea what's going on behind the scene and it's very easy for these celebrities to paint a picture for us and be totally different people in their private lives um so i think that you know we can only just you know try to use our powers of deduction and see what's in front of us but yeah, I, I think we don't know really what's going on, yeah. unfortunately. Well, folks, that, that's the thesis statement of this podcast ever. We don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I am just stumbling around in the dark. But the pop apologists do know. Um, so what you can do to support them, you can go subscribe to their podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, rate them five stars. Go follow them on Instagram. I mean, you know, listen, they're only at a measly 265,000. So we would love to <laughs> get that number up to at least 266, 267. <laughs> will you guys, uh, will you guys be doing a tour soon? What are you, uh, that's not a joke. Oh. Hopefully. So, uh, thank you so much. We truly just so appreciate being here. And yeah, we're hoping to do a tour. I think it's, we're going to start doing some dates, which sounds crazy to say, but we're going to do a few dates in the fall. So, so excited. Wild. Amazing. I mean, so I'm so proud of you guys. I'm so excited for thanks you guys. So much, Ryan. I, you know, thank you. Thank, uh, thank you for being here. I know your time is precious. Thanks for spending so much of it with us. And to you guys listening at home, isn't pop culture fun? Isn't it great? Isn't it fun that we can actually sit here and listen and dissect things and actually think about things and kind of relate it to our own lives? And remember, yep. we are all fallible. We all do make mistakes. True. You can pick yourself mm -hmm. back up, all of this stuff. And hopefully you will not be part of a 38 series that the popologists eventually do <laughs> on your life. You might have made a wrong turn but other than that uh fantastic and i hope you guys anytime you want to come back please do uh this was great uh, thank you thanks, so much Ryan. and love thank to have you, you on our you. show thank you yeah, anytime anytime